So 50 Cent, <laughs> right, I had some advice. Remember 50 Cent told Brown. I want to know what y'all think. I about remember 50 advice. Cent told me that hanging with 50 Cent. He was like, man, because he was always talking about like, man, you got to make a hit song, you know, this and that and that and this. And I was like, man, I just want to be like artistic and like, like push boundaries and like be progressive and like make a spirit, like experimental type music like that I never heard before and shit like that. Like, man, if you want to make music, music, <laughs> he's like, if you want to make music, that ain't going to make no money. Then you might as well just make that shit for yourself and listen to that shit in your basement. Cause that's where you're going to be at. <laughs> Yo, lots of words never been spoken. <laughs> hey man, y'all, y'all let shoot. He probably Uncle Fifty now, man. Y'all let Uncle Fifth you know, guide y'all to the truth, bro. Fifty be dropping game. He need to write another book. He does. Yeah, he, he need does. to write another book. And his books are always, <laughs> you know, more like strategic series. Mm -hmm. But he need to drop like just funny game, like yeah. game in a funny way, because he got such a personality and the shit he say, man. Like, bro, have you? Do you watch Power? Did you ever watch Power? I watched it like early on, not anymore. Yeah. I'm I'm like a good couple of I ain't gonna say a couple, a lot of seasons behind. It's funny. I'm weird because I was one of the people who were opposite. Like I watched, I missed the first season, mm -hmm. three seasons. I never, I still haven't watched them, and then I watched everything up from there. Or maybe it was the first two that I missed. I think that's why I stopped. End of yeah. season three was why I stopped. And it was uh, <laughs> I never wanted to watch it, bro. My sister just she she got me. She got me, bro. <laughs> But <laughs> it was one of those things. The Fifty had one of these things. I think it was like to Tariq, his uh, uh, buddy's son. So it's Fifty. I forgot his character name. Ghost son is Tariq, and he was like, "If they say he did that shit, he did that shit." I can't remember the exact quote. I'm gonna find that. Like EJ, bro, you gonna have to put that up, man. Like it's just, it's it's <laughs> cool. It's the funniest thing though, and, it, and it's truly Fifty Cent. Yeah, I think they're saying something like. Ghost killed somebody, right? So if that's Tariq dad, and it was just like, hey yo, if they say he did that shit, he did that. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> was, he said it so serious, bro. It's the funniest thing, bro. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a father to to show it to you, but like the advice itself, man. We we getting off track. The advice itself, man. Like that's how I really feel. Yeah, same. It's music business. People right? need to hear that, bro. Yeah. Like people really need to hear that. If you want to create something for your audience, oh, oh, I just create music for myself. No, this is the music business, and the music business is within the entertainment industry. Yeah. And this is why I always say is the biggest benefit that comedians have that artists don't have, specifically music artists, and that is that feedback loop. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. If you don't laugh. It's not funny. Yeah. Period. And they take it as is. Now, yeah. of course, there's like stupid crowds, bad crowds, but like generally, like, they kind of understand, like, hey, if they don't lie, if it's not funny. I'm here for the people. I'm here for the people. Yeah. Artists, <laughs> they can convince, oh, they don't get this shit, man. Not ready. It's deep. Y'all don't understand <laughs> where it's coming from. And it's it's this whole, you know, there's a there's the positive level of delusion that artists might think that they need to have at some level, especially yeah. if they're doing something different. But then, you know, there's a lot of people that, no, no, you really need to hear that. Like, you really shouldn't have been on American Idol because you actually can't sing. Yeah. You know, let, let alone good music. It's like, bro, no, you actually can't sing. Because I, I ain't going to lie. I used to think when I was little, you know, American Idol, Idol came out. I was probably single digits or something or, or like right into the double. And I'll be like, man, they probably put all these people on there on purpose so we could laugh at them but we could laugh at them <laughs> yeah. I, was like, I wonder if these people these people it's no way that some of these people actually think they can sing <sighs> now that i'm <laughs> now that i'm where i'm at the things that i get sent the things that i hear they didn't know that was a joke they didn't know i, I feel really like a, know. a lot of artists get i think they get the the love of the music like their love of the music their love of the craft confused with I guess what fans want to accept. It's like, just because you like it, just because you love it, doesn't mean that I as a listener have to feel the same way, right? I agree. And I don't know, man, I feel like that's a that's a real like mature moment for artists to, to be able to say like, okay, this is what my audience maybe wants from me, or maybe this is the type of stuff that I need to make to get me traction. And if they like that enough, then I can bring them back to maybe what I really want to make. Cause like you said, there's a very small percentage of artists where that is true for them. Like there, there are some people that's like, okay, maybe like you are a little bit ahead of your time. The music is still good, but it's maybe just different from what we're used to. Right. But then it's like the other 99.8%, it's like, nah, bro, you yep. need to listen to that shit. See, 
that's I mean that's it right there. It's simple. Like meet me where I, I'm at. Yeah. You know, and then take me somewhere new. But you can't just start over there. I don't trust you. I need to I need to know, man. Yeah, it was like you off in the distance, bro. I ain't yeah, trying to come over there yet. <laughs> I don't know you yet to come over there. Yet. What, you, what you holding? You yeah. know what I mean? Under that coat. I don't know. I don't trust you. So now that I trust you, you can take me somewhere new. Yeah. Show me the block. And man, I like it over here. And now you get credit, like, you know, the typical Kanye use samples. Can't get more familiar than samples, right? Yeah. Outside of covers, but use samples, very hip hop backpack. Then he does graduate, not graduation. 808s, 808s yeah. right? Took us somewhere after he connected, right? Yeah. So you can either do that or you can stay in your corner and with your good music and just let it be for you or hope, right? There's some people that they get situations. God just blesses them and makes it happen even though, you know, they didn't do the work. And a lot of artists try to use those people as inspiration, but that's that is not... That no, the norm. That anomaly, yeah. That is the that yeah. is one hundred percent an anomaly. Most people have to figure out a way to hustle, be strategic about what they create. Yeah. And then there's some people who even you'll create music, and I'll create this other stuff as a throwaway, not as a throwaway, but I know I'm not going to put marketing dollars because the label isn't going to put money behind this because it yeah. doesn't represent the brand that they bought me for. Yeah. Right. Or yeah. that we're in partnership with. And you have to, you have a fiscal responsibility, so to speak. I don't, yeah. so I don't like it go with artistry, but in music business, yeah, I do. All right, so you have that, and then you have some people who they get off their they get their creative climax by saying, "Hey, this is my main brand, and this is what one of people want to hear from me." So I'll continue to sell this way. I might create something and just put it out there as a Lucy and let it happen, and then then I also might write for other other people yeah take right. that experimental energy somewhere else experiment yeah. so yeah let them do it and they get all that but at least i was able to get that creative itch out yeah and then yeah. you know somebody like drake every once in a while you'll see them collaborate with somebody in a different space it's so like them I dipping have, toes in the water yeah, yeah. i got context yeah. oh yeah. why does drake sound like this well he's on this track with this artist yeah. so it makes sense so he, he doesn't get a knock for if it for as if it was his own song. Yeah. Right? So yeah. there's strategies and ways to go about it, but you can't expect any <laughs> but it's hard to accept have anybody accept you for all of who you are. Let's yeah. put it that way. Yeah, and like and you said something <laughs> important too, fifty cent said it. I mean he he's not saying like you have to quit making music. You just have to understand like this ain't this might not go where you want it to go, right? right. Like it's it's like if it goes back to I think we were talking about an a older episode, but like consumer behavior isn't going to fold or bend for you unless that shit is amazing. If it's amazing, we'll, we'll bend a little bit. If it's like yeah. less than amazing, which it could be great. Great music is less than amazing, but yeah. great don't always, you know what I'm saying, bend the culture, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Good music don't always bend the culture. Yep. Terrible music, damn sure ain't gonna bend, <laughs> isn't going to bend the Not culture. And I don't know, I always feel like a lot of artists who like to use a, the different excuse for like trash. That's me personally. It might be a hot take. What do you mean different excuse for trash? Like they like to say, oh, my music is different. So that's why people oh, don't understand. Oh, yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah, that shit yeah. is really just bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's not yeah. different at all. It's bad. 100%. 100%. But I don't know if we have that contest because we get so much music. You know what I'm saying? We we have to listen to so much music. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Like I, I've literally had a conversation with artists like, like, bro, you think you different? You the 15th person I've heard this week that sounds exactly like this. <sighs> Yo, I think that's something that... I don't know how you escape that because as an artist, I feel like they have to believe that in some sense. Yeah. And maybe, you know, an artist, y'all can comment on this, man. Like, I think there's sometimes maybe what's in an artist's head, right, is more different than their output, right? Mm. And maybe you're not in a space where you have all the con production, right? Or, you know, guidance collaborators to pull those things out of you. That's why collaborations are a real thing. I think people like sleep on the value of collaboration, being behind other around other people to pull those tools in different ways to communicate things that you already got inside of you. Yeah. Because it's like, yeah, you you felt different and when your head and you were saying something different in your head, but it came out just like what I already heard. Bro, you how different can you be when you got the beat off of YouTube? Yeah, yeah, and and, it's, and I think it's like, I guess situational context too. Like if I'm a Atlanta trap, well, if I live in Atlanta and I'm surrounded by, let's say, Atlanta trap rappers, and I want to make 
punk rock music. I'm gonna feel different because my my media surroundings. I am different compared to my media surroundings. Yes. But then once you hit the internet, it's like, well, now you're not different. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's hundreds and thousands of, of punk rock artists that that make great, amazing, really good music, right? And so then you go from, I guess, what is it like, big fish in a small pond to to small fish in a big pond? You know yes. what I'm saying? Like as soon as you put it out. And so I think it's just kind of like artists get caught up in an echo chamber a little bit. Or not even really an echo chamber, but just like like just that, like situational context. Like I am different compared to my understanding of what is out there right. and my understanding of who is doing what. So I think it's easy to think that, but that's why I say I think that's why we see it. What we see is because we hear multiple artists of different types of genre to know like, yo, man, I ain't saying this to knock you. You know what I'm saying? You still make good music. You're just not as different as you think you are. You know what right. I'm saying? You know, and that's not that's not a bad thing. Because, I mean, you can have 10 people that make the same type of music, but one of them is going to obviously be better. People are going to obviously like one more than others. So it's not the worst thing not to be, you know, not to be super different. Because being different today is really just being yourself openly. That's what I would argue. You know what I'm saying? There's a, there's yeah. a true today where everything's kind of out there. It's, Everything. It's hard to find yeah. different. Like, different is so hard. So it's not even a knock on you, right? To be like, oh, no, nah, it's not really that different. We've heard like literally. I mean, you the, what you said. I want people to know like Corey is literally talking about. No, I just talked to an artist that sounds just like just like, like you, this, bro. This, yeah. That is not a <laughs> <laughs> abnormal occurrence for us, right? <laughs> um, but it's not a knock. Different is hard, and that's why when it's done on a high level, it gets put on a pedestal yeah. because it's hard to truly achieve different. Yeah. It should be hard. It's be hard different and good. And good. Yeah. Ooh, that's a, that's yeah. a whole other that's thing, a, right? that's, a, that's the magic combo. That's a, that's a whole other <laughs> thing, let alone great. So I think, because <laughs> different doesn't sell, and I think we think different sells, yeah. right? And we all want to be different because we've seen something different, right, that might have inspired us, but I don't think different is as important as authentic. Yeah, good point. Authentic sells. Different sells when we know you enough. Right? When we know you enough, yeah. different will begin to sell. Yeah. So then you gotta take us to that place. But authentic can sell when the music isn't even all that great. You just have something to say, and it comes from a perspective, and it feels so raw. Yeah. That's what people are getting from Glorilla right now. Yeah, right. Yeah. It just feels authentic and real. Yeah, right? that's why I, when people uh, people love Cardi on her come up. All right, you know you have all these people that put on these airs on their music or whatever, and then they're just like this different person when they're in their normal life, yeah. And you listen to Cardi, you like, bro, she wilder, and when she regularly talking, <laughs> yeah. she is on the track. Yeah. <laughs> but, like she just be saying some crazy shit. She sound funny. She her voice, his voice is really like that. So, uh, different isn't as important as authentic, and it goes back to what we said earlier, which is um, just that whole idea of your POV, right? Your perspective is the value. Uh, last time when we went to LA. Um, on a plane, I was listening to, well, I watched a bad movie, and then I watched this master class. You know the the brand master class. Oh yeah, the little app, the app thing. Yeah. I had never seen any of those before, but they had one on Howard Schultz. He's the CEO of Starbucks. I think he was actually the founder too, but I know he left and came back. He did like some Steve Jobs stuff, like, hey, up oh, company go down, come back flex, show you how bad I am. Um, but one of his business tenets that he talked about was not being being so focused on being different and being more focused on disrupting yeah all right and the difference between different and disrupting because people always kind of think well i'm gonna do something different i'm disrupting but disrupting is anchored by what the norm is all right and so is difference is a contrast of what the norm is but disruption is hey i'm going to give my unique take on something that already exists yeah you know what i'm saying so it's like us getting on the same track but you make a love song and i make a i don't know hood banger or something like that yeah or we both make a love song but i do it from a hood voice and you do it from like more of a r&b voice where it's just like what is your perspective on what's already happening so if you can authentically cut through and give a a a unique approach to a genre that all already exists like that's what you're seeing now when with the um what is it what is it the, the toxic r&b right yeah toxic yeah. r&b you know I, I had like an old person moment the other day where it just made, <laughs> made me feel old where i'm like this shit already existed this ain't nothing really all that different contextually when you look at the lyrics and everything 
And then you look at Trap Soul, right? That was a flip of basically still just R and B. Yeah. Right. Then you look at Neo Soul, and I think it was an executive who really like marketed that whole thing and put these artists in the batch. We're new soul to to you know say, hey, how do we separate ourselves? We ain't from, the Temptations. R and B. Yeah, we're not the. <laughs> hey, we definitely ain't the Temps. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, we don't got froze. We wear temps. We don't got. We got the temps, bro. And so it was like, how do I not only market as something new, but also alleviate that that ooh, difficulty that comes with being compared to greats that have already been there? Mm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It gives you more freedom because I reframed what you're consuming. Yeah. You know? So though. If you can just take something and disrupt it by giving us a, a unique tweak, and again, of course, it has to be good. Can't go back to that enough, right? Yeah. It has to be good, but that's how you disrupt because we're used to it so we can consume, but when another thing that happens when you're used to something, it's like a cover. A cover is the best way to describe it. Describe it. If you did a cover song and you sang your ass off, all right? Because I know the song already, check it out. I pay more attention. No, well, not just that, right? But I pay more attention to you because I already mm. know the song, so I yeah. know the unique qualities you brought to the song. Yeah, that's a good point. But if I didn't point. know the song, it's kind of like I'm just hearing it all. You know what I mean? And that's why I think it's easier for artists to get attention, not only get attention um, with covers because we know, yeah, it's just something you, you're already used to, but to get appreciation for their talent. Because we know, oh, dang, he did this and they did that. That yeah. was the norm. Yeah, it was a preset bar for it, it pretty much. It was a preset bar, yeah. so we have something to compare it to. And, yeah. you know, humans compare it. That's all it is. So, like, well, I don't want to harp on this too long because that, that all came from the 50 Daddy <laughs> <laughs> Route advice. I didn't even know we were going to be on that that long, bro. But you got to see, this is, this is artist advice. 